Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I actually wanted to cover one more topic before I get to the conclusion of this video series. And that topic is basically going to be doxing, right? So basically, I'm looking at a lawsuit that basically is done in federal court and it's in Michigan's federal court, the Southern Division. And the lawsuit concerns something called doxing or doxing. I guess I'll say doxing just to keep it short. So doxing, short for dropping documents, is the practice of disclosing a person's identifying information, example, their home address, on the internet to retaliate against and harass the outed person. This opinion addresses an issue of first impression. When a defendant drops a plaintiff's document on the internet, does the defendant's doxing amount to constitutionally minimum contact with the state where the plaintiff resides? On the facts of this case, the court finds that the defendant's disclosure of a plaintiff's home address on Twitter is a type of doxing that creates minimum contacts with the plaintiff's home state, right? So there was a lot said in that one small paragraph, but I'm really just going to focus first on doxing and how it basically is defined and what it actually is. I mean, we've read the DERP definition, but really I want to say that doxing is nothing new, right? Harassment is an old concept. Invasion of privacy is an old concept, and defamation is an old concept, right? You know, so doxing is essentially all of those. You're, and the reason I say is essentially all of those is because I'm kind of going above and beyond this paragraph here. I've actually read other things on the internet, which basically looks at doxing. And basically, when you're doxing someone, you're, you're taking information, that person's information, and you're throwing it out there on the internet because you're trying to harass them, right? You're trying to harass them or retaliate against them, or you're basically trying to hurt them. I guess hurt them is a good way to sum it up, right? You're trying to find a way to hurt them, right? So basically defamation of character is nothing new. Harassment, nothing new. Invasion of privacy is nothing new. So even though we have a new term, doxing, we only have that term because of the internet. I think there used to be a time where only corporations could actually dox someone, right? Because only the corporation had enough money and resources to basically publicize certain information, right? So I guess an individual could put an ad in the paper and basically dock someone or to harass someone or invade a person's privacy. Yeah, so an individual could have done that. But historically, I think only, for example, a newspaper. Historically, I think only a newspaper publisher or a magazine publisher had the power to put a person's information out there. They Maybe they only had the power to focus in on one individual and embarrass them. So that's why you have a lot of uh, old case law where you have these newspaper and magazine companies being sued. But because of the internet, we have new ways of actually harassing people or trying to hurt people. And of course, the internet wasn't made just to hurt people, but I'm just saying because of the internet, now every individual on the planet has the ability to basically publish information. And because of this, I think that's why we have this name, this new term called doxing. But in essence, it's really nothing new. It's just that the methods are new, right? So I don't know that it needs to be given another name but it is what it is. It's called doxing. But at the end of the day, you're really just trying to hurt somebody by putting personal information about that person out on the internet. Now, what's interesting in this situation is that there is a concept called personal jurisdiction. For example, you can't be dragged. If you live in Chicago, you can't be dragged into a court in California simply because they want to hold you to California's rules, 
right? You have to do something that's going to give the California court power over you. If you don't do anything that could give the California court power over you, then any judgment that the California court produces is going to be null and void. So what this, or the reason this is interesting, the reason this is interesting is because if you hop on Twitter and you basically attack someone that's uh, in California, if you're in Chicago and you hop on Twitter and then you don't like a guy in California and you decide to start a Twitter campaign to basically harass them, then you could possibly be subjecting yourself to that person's home state jurisdiction, right? If you start posting personal information about that person on Twitter or on the internet in general, and that information was on the internet, but it wasn't public information, then you could be considered uh, under the California court's jurisdiction. Now, we all know, well, we're, we're getting better with the internet. I think the government is getting better with the inter internet, but there's still pieces of information out there that you can get that's considered private information, but you're a, you have a skill, you have the ability to dig, you make a few phone calls and you cross-reference that with some internet searches and boom, you have that person's personal information that you drop on Twitter. So in that situation, you would be considered doxing or another, the actual name for it, it would be invasion of privacy where you're disclosing private information on the internet, right? So it doesn't matter that the information could have been gotten uh, through public means, the fact is that you're disclosing that person, you're invading upon that person's seclusion, right? So, you know, that's it for this piece. 